My name is Bizito, and today we're going to be finding out if the 1050 Ti is any good in 2024. Let's find out. The test system I have here is a Ryzen 5 5600 with no overclock, the Gigabyte 1050 Ti with 4GB of VRAM and 32GB of DDR4-3800 Patriot Viper memory. The rest of the specs are on the screen. I'll be doing a 12 game benchmark with the overall comparison at the end and some pricing data as well. Let's get straight to the benchmarks. In our first game we have a Plague Tale Requiem on low settings. At 1080p the average FPS was 25.90 while at 1440p it fell to 16.87 FPS. The 1% lows also had a decrease from 20.1 FPS at 1080p to 13.7 at 1440p. On average FPS, this was a performance difference of 42.2% and 37.9% for 1% lows. Now, the 1050Ti could play Plague Tale Requiem pretty okay under 30 FPS with not too much problems with frame times, but I mean at the same time, it's just not that enjoyable of an experience. On Assassin's Creed Valhalla on low settings, we found that the 1080p result had 46.1 FPS on average compared to the 32.07 at 1440p. Now this was a decrease in performance for average FPS of 30.5% and the 1% lows show a similar result with 38.47 at 1080p compared to the lower 23.47 at 1440p. Now this game didn't feel that smooth on the benchmark, there was some hitches and frame time, it just was a little bit too choppy for me, so although the average FPS wasn't that bad on 1080p, it's probably not something I would recommend on the 1050Ti. Control on low settings with DX12 at 1080p achieved a result of 48.13 FPS on average FPS, whereas the 1440p result dropped to 28.1 FPS. Now the 1% lows went from 43.27 FPS at 1080p down to 24.93 FPS on 1440p. The percentage difference on the average FPS was 52.6% which is quite a lot, and the 1% lows was extremely high at a 53.8% performance difference. Now Control did have a few problems with frame times, especially if you're exploding furniture and there's a lot of particles being used on the screen. It just didn't feel that great, even when I'm shooting the enemies. It felt okay, but there were some problems with hitches and the FPS, so it's not the best of experience, and I probably wouldn't recommend it. Although it is playable, you just have to be able to work with those little lag spikes that you feel when you're playing the game. Cyberpunk 2077 is up next on low settings and for average FPS we achieved 29.40 on 1080p and on 1440p we achieved 17.93 FPS. For average FPS this was a performance difference of 48.5%. The 1% lows had a 35.5% performance difference between the two resolutions. Now, the little bit concerning thing on this benchmark is that it was very laggy. Um, when I actually was looking at the benchmark while it was running, it just did not feel smooth at all. Again, Cyberpunk 2077 was running at under 30 FPS, so I mean, if you get some sort of performance patch, you might be able to play the game, but honestly, I probably wouldn't recommend it, and this was just the benchmark, so I mean, it is possible, but I didn't really feel like that was a very enjoyable experience. I was pretty surprised with Far Cry 6 on low settings. At 1080p we achieved 51.33 FPS, whilst at 1440p we achieved 34.67. The 1% lows had a good result as well at 44.27 FPS at 1080p and 30.70 at 1440p. Now honestly this in-game benchmark did feel pretty smooth, it didn't have really any problems with frame times as far as I could tell when I was looking at the benchmark and overall it did feel pretty nice um, on the screen, pretty fluid, not too many issues with 
lag or anything like that. So yeah, probably could play Far Cry 6 on low settings, but do keep in mind you're probably not going to be achieving 60 FPS, but we almost got there, so it's not a bad experience, and the 1% lows show that as well. Fortnite is up next on low settings, running on DX12. Now the average FPS on 1080p was 104.30, and at 1440p it was 64.03. The 1% lows performed well at 74.67 for 1080p, and 45.23 at 1440p. When comparing both resolutions, the drop in performance was 38.6% on average FPS and 39.4% on 1% lows. This was a really good experience on Fortnite. It was relatively smooth. I didn't experience any problems with frame time. It wasn't laggy. When I was shooting against other players, it was pretty easy to play fights. And yeah, everything turned out quite nicely in Fortnite. So yes, you definitely can play Fortnite on 1080p on the 1050 Ti or even 1440p if you wanted to. Probably won't be able to play like competitively, but I mean, hey, it was a great experience. So, you know, if you want to play with friends or anything like that, I think you'll be more than happy with the 1050ti on 1080p. Next up we have Hitman 3 on low settings and this one was a little bit surprising. The average FPS at 1080p was 63.57 whereas at 1440p it was 40.23. This was a performance difference of 44.96% and the 1% lows had a performance decrease 52.87 at 1080p to 34 at 1440p, which made Hitman 3 a pretty nice experience on this benchmark. I felt it was pretty smooth and honestly a playable experience. So definitely you can play Hitman 3 at 1080p on the 1050Ti in my opinion. Hogwarts Legacy is up and this troublesome title for myself did alright on the low settings. The average FPS achieved 39.53 FPS, while at 1440p it achieved 21.90. The 1% lows also had a decrease of course from 35.2 FPS at 1080p to 19.53 at 1440p. This showed a performance difference of 57.4% on average FPS and 57.3% on 1% lows. Now just to note, unsurprisingly, Hogwarts Legacy just didn't play that nicely on the 1050Ti. The 4GB of VRAM is just not enough even at 1080p and was quite a stuttery experience to say the least. Horizon Zero Dawn is up next on low settings and the average FPS was 46.9 on 1080p and 32.73 at 1440p. The 1% lows went from 39.7 FPS at 1080p down to 28.6 at 1440p. The in-game benchmark here performed quite nicely and it didn't have too much stutter. This is a very interesting title for the 1050Ti, being Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart on low settings. The average FPS at 1080p was 31.57, whereas at 1440p it fell to 22.1 FPS. This was a performance decrease of 30% for average FPS. The 1% lows also followed a similar suit, going from 18.27 FPS at 1080p to 13.43 at 1440p. Now this again was a 26.5% performance drop in the 1% lows. Now unfortunately, this game is just not that playable on a 1050Ti on 4 gigs of VRAM, let alone at 1440p. I have seen it run quite well on a Steam Deck, but unfortunately on low settings on the PC, it just doesn't do that well. I wouldn't really recommend playing it on the 1050Ti, but you can give it a shot if you really want to. Shadow of the Tomb Raider on low settings had the average FPS at 1080p at 54.97 whilst it fell to 38.23 at 1440p. 
Now, the 1% lows did pretty well at 46.97 FPS at 1080p compared to 32.63 at 1440p. This was a 30.55% reduction. Now despite this, at 1080p, I definitely say Shadow of the Tomb Raider was more than playable. The game felt pretty smooth and I didn't notice any problems with frame times. So yeah, Shadow of the Tomb Raider on low settings can be played on a 1050 Ti. Lastly is the Callisto Protocol on low settings. The 1080p result was really good at 71.03 FPS compared to the 1440p's 49.43. The 1% lows did well at 1080p's being 48.3 FPS and at 1440p 35.07. This was a performance decrease of 30.4% on average FPS and 27.4% on 1% lows, so not too bad. Now this is another game that was definitely very playable on the 1050 Ti and I was pleasantly surprised to feel that it was a smooth experience on this benchmark. Now for the overall comparisons. On average FPS, the percentage difference is pretty big between 1080p and 1440 as expected. The 1080p result was 54% faster on 1080p compared to the 1440p results on a 12 game average. This is expected from a 4 gig VRAM card with the lowest percentage difference being 35%. Hogwarts Legacy had the largest percentage difference at 57%. Same thing goes for the 1% lows with 1080p being 53% faster than 1440p on the 12 game average. Again, Hogwarts Legacy had a 57% percentage difference between the two resolutions, which is also in line with the average FPS as well. An important consideration here is the frame times, and whilst the percentage difference is high on all games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, if we do this realistically and we say the card can only handle 1080p max, taking a look at this graph again, yeah, 1080p might look playable, but when I was looking at the actual benchmark running, the game was quite stuttery on the benchmark and honestly, that would really annoy me. It is really important to note that the frame times really do matter and on this card that is seriously limited in terms of VRAM, it is an issue although it might not seem so on the graph. I have some pricing data as well and as you can see here from the three 1050Ti listings that I saw on Trade Me New Zealand, the average price was 248 New Zealand dollars, which is really expensive. At the launch MSRP, the 1050Ti was 228.99 cents New Zealand, which is still less than the second hand listings today. It goes to show that the 1050 Ti isn't really sold anymore, even on the second hand market. And there are so many other cards that have replaced it for gaming. Cost per frame is interesting as well, as the second hand pricing for the 12 game average, we have $4.86 New Zealand for 1080p. Even so, this is slightly worse than even the MSRP cost per frame. Now I know the sample size is really small for the second hand data, but as I mentioned there really aren't that many left on the second hand market anymore as far as I could tell when I was making this video. For the pricing, what should have happened is there should have been a reduction in the cost of the 1050 Ti relative to the performance that you're getting out of it that would have made it a better value proposition, but it's not. I guess what we're missing here in terms of the pricing is that this card released in 2016 and there have been so many cards that have come out like the RX 580 which are cheaper which you can get off AliExpress which are just such a better value proposition compared to the 1050 Ti even when the 1050 Ti was launched. You're probably looking at this video thinking what in the world did I just watch? And though the 1050 Ti is not really made for 1440p at all, and was even considered a budget graphics card back in the day as well. Despite this, I think that the average FPS did alright, but in some games the frame times were pretty awful, despite being able to run the games to a certain extent. Hitman 3, Far Cry 6, Fortnite, 
Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and especially the Callisto Protocol, felt very playable at 1080p low settings, despite having only 4GB of VRAM available. I think this shows that the 1050 Ti is somewhat usable, but as you saw, when it comes to its value proposition, it's uh, pretty bad. There are so many other cards that have better value propositions on the second-hand market, like the RX 5600 XT, the GTX 1070, or the RX 580 which you can pick off AliExpress for less than 120 New Zealand dollars. I have another video benchmarking this card, so stay tuned for it. The 1050 Ti was just underwhelming, and probably warrants an upgrade if you want to play eSport titles at above 144Hz, or any of the later AAA titles. That about sums up the video, thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope you guys have a good day. See you in the next one, bye!